Hello and welcome to the Introduction to HMIS Data Entry Training, Part 7, Service Transactions. I'm Andrea Carey, a System Administrator with the NCCEH Data Center. This training will review a particular tool in HMIS called Service Transactions. First, we'll look at what are service transactions, the components that make up service transactions, and how to assign service transactions dates. Lastly, we'll look at a few common mistakes to avoid. You can track services that you deliver to clients with service transactions in HMIS. Most data is tracked in HMIS through the Entry Exit tab, but you can use the Service Transaction tab to track additional client engagement. Service transactions connect data to a client's profile so you can see a broader picture of system use. For example, you can show the financial assistance that a client in your prevention project used to avoid homelessness. Thousands of types of services are pre-programmed into HMIS. Service transactions also include notes, total cost, file attachments, and a referrals section. They're available for any HMIS participating agency. A service transaction is automatically created for shelter point shelter stays. Service transactions are a great way to track the hard work that you do with clients. From case management to providing rental assistance, service transactions allow users to show this in HMIS. Are service transactions required? Well, it depends on the project type and funding source. VA SSVF, state and ESG city rapid rehousing projects, and most coordinated entry supportive services only or diversion projects do require service transactions. Some other projects do as well. Always check with your funding partner to confirm. So how does it work? Service transactions are made up of two components based on AIRS taxonomy codes. There is a need and a matching service. Together these create a service transaction. Any service automatically creates a corresponding need or a need can be created without a corresponding service. A need without a service would signal an unfulfilled or outstanding need. There is also an option to add a referral, but there is a separate add-on workflow training for this. For those of you keeping track of our acronyms, AIRS stands for the Alliance of Information and Referral Systems, which is just a comprehensive list of services used across social service areas. There are two types of service transaction dates, depending on the type of service. One-time, discrete services have the same start date and end date. This would be case management, deposits for rent or utilities, or arrears. Month-long service transactions use the start and end date of when the service is applied. Rental or utility assistance apply for the whole month. One exception is VA-funded SSVF projects. SSVF projects treat all services as one-time transactions to match the date checks are cut. This is for VA auditing and administrative purposes. Most service transactions take place on one day and you'll enter the date of service for both the start date and end date. For example, if Helen Housing arranges a utility deposit check for Henrietta's new apartment, the check is a one-time payment for the day the payment was made. Some financial assistance is not made for a single instance, but to cover a month's worth of services. Rental and utility assistance fall under this type. In this case, the service covering the rent lasts the entire month. A start date is therefore the first day of when the rent or utilities are covered. If the lease begins on the 1st of April, then the start date is the first of the month no matter when the check was actually sent out. The end date is the end of the month that is covered. So, if the lease starts on the 1st, the end date would be for the last day of April, the 30th. Let's look at an example. Jorge is a rapid rehousing client receiving services in your project. Together, you and Jorge look for an apartment for him and his daughter on February 2nd. He continues the search the next week on February 8th. Which dates do you enter for the housing search service transaction? A same-day transaction beginning February 2nd and also ending February 2nd 
a short-term transaction beginning February 2nd and ending February 8th, or a same-day transaction beginning February 8th and ending February 8th. If you thought the first answer, you're right. The service that you provided for Jorge was the support for housing search on February 2nd. That is a distinct same-day service that does not continue for days or weeks on end. How to record service transactions in HMIS. Check your enter data as and backdate modes and start on your head of households profile. First, we need to navigate to the service transaction tab. While most data entry occurs on the client information tab, the service transactions tab is to the right. Select add service. Then select the appropriate client for the service. The head of household is identified as the primary client. Then select the appropriate client for the service. The head of household is identified as the primary client. Confirm the service transaction project. This will match your EDA mode. Confirm and enter service transaction dates. The start date will automatically have your backdate mode entered or today's date and time if you're entering data live. The service type drop-down menu will have the most used services that your agency has selected. If you don't see the service you wish to record, check with your agency administrator or the data center. Like adding project start on the entry exit tab, service transactions ask us to confirm the basics before allowing the service details to be saved and finalized. Click Save and Continue to go to the next page. The top confirms details about the service. Scroll down. There is an optional box for service notes to add details or context. Service notes will not appear under the Case Notes tab on the client profile, but they will be visible in the service transaction. Under Service Costs, you can add the total cost of this particular service if you would like to report on costs from HMIS directly. Keep in mind that for rent or other financial assistance, you apply the service to the head of household only. If multiple clients are selected, then the amount of assistance would look doubled for two client households or tripled for three client households, etc. Service notes and service costs are not required by HMIS at NCCEH currently, but many agencies find them to be useful fields. Apply funds for service is only used if your agency uses Fund Manager, an add-on service point module. If information is added here and no one in your agency uses Fund Manager, the data won't be accessible. As a general rule, we suggest you do not enter data that will not be used in reports. Support documentation can be used to add a file attachment. If there is any documentation from the client or another entity like a landlord, you may select the Add button. A pop-up will appear with a familiar instruction to attach a file from your computer. Like all file attachment options in HMIS, we highly recommend that you only attach documentation specifically related to housing clients. The next section is follow-up information. This can be used along with the Dashlet report from the homepage to remind you which clients need follow-up contact. As the service is recorded, add a projected follow-up date and identify the follow-up user. But you'll need to know where you or your colleague's license is assigned. What is their default enter data as mode? For our example, the follow-up date is the end of February. In order to select our fake HMIS Agency Administrator, I will select the county-wide project that just lists the agency name and county. Heading Home Housing, Rowan County, is Helen Housing's default EDA mode. Now that I've selected Heading Home Housing, Rowan County, Helen Housing is able to be selected from the user list. I've claimed this follow-up for Helen. The two fields called follow-up made and completed follow-up date should only be updated once the follow-up occurs. The last step to finish out a service transaction is the need information. 
If the service has been delivered, then the need status is closed. Other options are identified and in progress. When would you use these other two options? Well, if the service is a referral, then you might not close the need until the referral goes through and the client connects with the other agency. The need status can illustrate a warm handoff. In some agencies, financial assistance is a multi-step approval process. The need status could be used to show when a request was submitted versus when the request is approved. If the need is not met, there are several options to explain why, either client-based reasons or provider-based reasons. Now that the need information is complete, select Save and Exit. Now the service is complete. If you need to edit any of the fields we just reviewed, click the pencil icon on the left of the services row. Remember, service transactions are required for rapid rehousing projects, but may be used by all project types. Services contain a need and a service, and services may be one day or month long transactions. Month long transactions are applied for the dates the service covers. Let's check our knowledge one more time. If our client Henrietta's rental assistance check is cut on March 24th to cover April's rent, what should the dates be for the service transaction? For this example, she is not served by a Veterans Affair SSVF project. So, would it be a month-long service beginning March 1st, March 24th, or April 1st? Since the check covers rent for April, the service transaction dates will be the first and last days of April, 4-1 to 4-30. Thank you for joining us for this Introduction to HMIS Data Entry Training, Part 7, Service Transactions.